This is the first of our harder circular motion questions. At first, it just looks like a typical conical pendulum. Uh, let's read through the question and see what makes it different. We have a particle P of mass M attached to one end of a light, inextensible string of length 3A, just like with a conical pendulum. The other end is attached to a fixed point A which is a vertical distance A above a smooth horizontal table. Now here's the point where it starts to be a little bit different. Uh, normally with a conical pendulum question it's not actually lying on a table, it's just rotating round by itself. The particle moves on the table in a circle whose centre O is vertically below A as shown in the diagram. The string is taut and the speed of P is 2 square root AG. And we've got to find the tension in the string and the normal reaction of the table on P. So laying out the force diagram for a conical pendulum is uh, really not too bad. There is only the tension in the string and the weight of the object. What makes this different is it's lying on table, so there is also going to be a normal reaction. So our first thing to do in this case is to draw a force diagram and generally the first thing you're going to do in almost any mechanics question is to draw a force diagram which labels all the forces, all the distances, any velocities or accelerations you know. When I drew the force diagram this is what it looked like. We have um, all of the information that's on the diagram but we also have uh, the reaction force, we have the weight of the object we have the tension in the string, and I've also labelled the acceleration due to circular motion. Uh, there's two formulae you could use. You could use omega squared r or v squared over r. In this case I've used v squared over r because it's given the speed in the question, and that's going to be v. Now looking at that, I've also labelled r, which is the radius of the circular motion, and I've labelled theta, which is the angle between vertical and the string, because I know from prior experience that I'm going to need all of these. The R is actually in the equation for the acceleration due to circular motion. The theta is going to be there because I'm going to need to take the sine and cosine of tension when I resolve in different directions. Before I can go any further then, I actually do need to work out what R is and what theta is. That's not too bad. If we think about it, it's a right angle triangle and so I can calculate R using relatively ba basic trigonometry. All I have to do is use Pythagoras. I know the hypotenuse of the triangle is 3A, I know one side is A, and that means the other side is the square root of 8 times A. Again, once I've got a right angle triangle, I can use Sokotoa all the way back into sort of GCSE mathematics to work out what the sine, cosine, and if I needed it, which I don't in this question, the tangent of the angle. We have sine being root 8, which is the opposite over 3, which is the hypotenuse, and we have cosine being 1, which is the adjacent, divided by 3, which is the hypotenuse. Actually, of course, all of these were root 8 times a and 3 times a, but all the 8s, all the a's, sorry, cancel out. So what I've got now is all the basic information I need in order to solve the question. I don't actually need the specifics of the question anymore. The force diagram and the extra information I've worked out give me all the information I need in order to solve the problem. And in fact, once we've get, got this, once we've got to this stage, it really is just a matter of resolving in a couple of different directions, and we're done. So the first thing now is to find the tension in the string. If we look at this, there's a couple of sensible directions we can resolve. We can resolve vertically. Because we know the object is not moving up or down or accelerating up or down, we know that we could just set all the upward forces equal to all the downward forces. Um, that's not going to help us in this case because we don't know R and R is going to be involved. Resolving horizontally, in other words resolving towards the centre of the circular motion, does look like a sensible thing to do. 
because all the R force and the mg force is going to disappear. The only force that's left there is um, part of tension. And we know that it's this force which is providing the acceleration making it move around in a circle. So if I resolve toward the centre of the circle I get the horizontal component of tension which is T sine theta and that has to equal by Newton's second law mass times acceleration ma and I know that a is v squared over r and I also know from the question that v squared is 4ag and I know from my calculations that r is root 8 times a so the a's cancel out straight away um, I know that sine theta is root 8 over 3 so all I have to do now is substitute everything I know cancel everything down, rearrange everything and I get a really nice answer. T is 3 over 2 mg. Excellent. You'd expect m and g to be involved in the answer because you haven't actually been told the mass of the object or the weight of the object, you've just been told it's m. A very similar calculation is going to work to find the normal reaction. Instead of resolving toward the centre of the circle, we are now going to resolve vertically. We're going to use the tension that we worked out in the previous question and just rearrange and solve again. So again, we're going to find that if we resolve upwards, we've got the reaction plus the vertical component of tension. And that's got to equal mg because it's in equilibrium if you consider the vertical direction plug everything in, rearrange, and you get again this really really nice simple answer. And it's an answer that you'd expect, again, it's got mg in it. All of that came from drawing the correct force diagram. If the force diagram had been incorrect, if I'd missed off the normal reaction, everything would have gone wrong. So the basic summary of all of this is you can't solve questions like this unless you draw a correct sensible force diagram which has everything labelled on it. If there are lengths and angles which are missed off you need to try and work those out using Pythagoras and basic trigonometry. Once that's there the individual little features of the question don't really matter. You can just work from the force diagram and work from resolving in particular directions. If you're resolving in a direction where there's circular motion then you need to use the basic equations for acceleration. You need to use either v squared over r or omega squared r. And if you've got something like this, you know that you're probably going to be resolving vertically or horizontally. And that is all there is to that question.